G'day folks, uh, this is just a video I'm putting together for our members primarily in uh, Legio 1 Cohort 1. Uh, this video is about shield construction and uh, this is to best help our uh, members put together their own shields uh, to the uh, specifications that we, uh, we have set. Um, our shield construction is based on the Dura Europus shield. Primarily this is just a shield construction system that we're using to best enable our members to cheaply make their own shields so that they can participate in uh, events. But the method of construction of the time was to uh, create strips of wood uh, and then laminate glue them together uh, to uh, create the shape of the shield. Is we choose to use um, marine ply. We choose marine ply because it gives our uh, shields longevity uh, against various weathers. Uh, we cover them with a layer of linen. Um, a lot of shields were made with a, a leather uh, covering but we also find that uh, leather can be expensive to obtain. Uh, would have been expensive to attain back in the period as well but also we use this method of construction uh, because it also is tested in battle so we actually can use these shields in battle they're not just a, a display shield they're, they're a shield that we can use and I have used uh, myself in uh, a battle situation uh, with steel combat as I progress in this video we'll give you the various details and how to how I, we construct the shields uh, we'll be using various materials like uh, like I mentioned the marine plywood we'll be using red linen blood red linen which we obtain from spotlight we will also be using uh, rawhide uh, edging, but we won't be using brass edging. And I have found personally that during combat with a brass edging, uh, I have found that uh, it can pose a safety risk on the, um, the battlefield and doing uh, co uh, steel combat. Uh, I have found that the edge has come loose and flipped up uh, from the shield, the scutum, and that can pose a uh, health risk not only to the uh, the wielder of the shield but also to the combatant that's attacking the person with the shield um, so we prefer to use the uh, the raw hide edging or the leather edging because that's a lot safer a lot safer but it will still also protect your uh, shield quite adequately adequately especially in combat my main concern all right without further ado um, we'll get cracking Okay folks, so uh, we're going to start with plywood, marine ply. We've got two sheets of 4mm marine ply. These uh, up, you can obtain from Bunnings for about 35 bucks for the pair. Uh, they're 810mm uh, by 1220mm. Um, and they cost uh, 35 bucks for the pair. So uh, that's your first start, it's going to be your first outlay. Um, what we'll be doing is we'll be um, uh, gluing these together, uh, laminating them together, and then while wet, we'll be wrapping them around a couple of 44-gallon uh, drums um, and strapping them down. And the, uh, the length uh, is set to 105.5 centimeters. That's easy to work with. And there's plenty of room with this size. Ply plywood leaves you a little bit of off cut. Once we've laminated it together, then we'll be, uh, once we remove it from the, the 44 gallon drums to get the curvature, um, then we'll cut it to size. Okay, so first of all, what we're going to do is we're going to laminate these two pieces of plywood together. Um, just regular series PDA, which we will do. Um, you can buy spuddings, you can buy it at 110, you can buy it at 200, obviously. Uh, it'll be a reasonable amount. This whole bottle will probably do um, more than enough at the moment at this point. Um, we'll use more when we get the linen and we put the linen on top of the shield. That's fine. So, uh, what we really need, what, we, what, we, what I generally do, stick the in. And we should start laying glue out. So we're going to place. We want to even coat right across the uh, centre here. Liberal amounts. Now, some people use a paintbrush at this stage. Uh, you can use a piece of wood, whatever you've got in here. Um, I do have paintbrushes, but uh, layer it up, spread it around. As much as you need to put all of this together. If you put more on, still more on. Now I'm making 
this particular shield for one of our members, because he doesn't have the facilities at home to be able to make it. But generally speaking, you can do this just about anywhere. I made the first shield for my army, I made that by myself in a uh, property that didn't have a workshop. So, uh, it just takes a bit of determination. It doesn't hurt to have a bit of knowledge. Most people, especially medievalists, know how to construct shields. So if you're first getting into reenactment and you don't know how to make one, you're a little confident, just get hold of the medievalists. You know. I actually learned this method of shield construction from my arm smith, JJ Edmonds. Sorry, JJ Edmonds. <laughs> Sorry, sorry. Uh, JJ Blackstone and Armory from Bio New South Wales. He's one of the top fans of it. And so I had a crack at it. Pretty much that hard. That pretty much should suffice. But I'm just going to use a little bit. I'm cheating. I have got a brush can. So I'll use a brush. It's three old paper shields. What's the thing? Great thing about this stuff is it dries clear. When we, uh, when we get to the point of laying a linen across the top, we'll use the wood again. Um, like I said, because it does dry clear, um, it does a really good job of holding linen in place, which in turn holds your plywood together and, and gets uh, received blows from combat. Right, that's pretty fucking good thing. Uh, that's good. <sighs> Don't get much pressure to use. Right, once again, a second piece, uh, the uh, marking in. Uh, I'm good on the inside, so I'm just done fixing. And I'm going to have to sit here and drop a off. Let's come on all up. Just by pushing the air bombs out. You probably will get air bombing sometimes. Um, I can do about that. But I think you find it during construction, we'll talk about that. We can uh, set some more glue and fill in the whole bottle. Okay, so what I've got here is I've got two 44 gallon drums, one on top of the other, because I need just that little bit extra length. And then what I've also prepped over here is a series of straps. These retention straps will uh, hold it in place on the hold the plywood on in place on the um, 44 gallon drums. As you can see, I started uh, with three straps. I started to tension it around the 44 gallon drums. I'll start adding more straps and then start increasing the tension until I get a conformity around the 44 gallon drums. Okay, so I've now got the plywood tensioned and conforming to the circumference of the uh, 44 gallon drum. Just a word of warning. Make sure when you tension that you don't tension your straps underneath upper and lower level straps. <laughs> Otherwise you can't release and retension. Right, so we basically leave that for a day. Let it all uh, dry out. We've pulled off the uh shield off of the 44 gallon drums. As you can see, we've got a nice Roman curve there for our scutum. Next thing we've got to do is we've got to shave off the edges and smooth them out. And of course, we've got to cut it to size. 105 centimeters long. I've already marked out the area I'm going to cut off. And then we've got to mark out the area in which our shield boss is going to go in. Be the shield boss there. And that's Pretty starting to look like a shield, isn't it? Uh, so what we do is we have a look at the uh, circumference of the inner shield boss, and then we mark out two back to its front D's in the centre so that we've got a hand hold, and we cut them out. So without further ado, I'll uh, I'll carry on doing that. And I have cut the end piece off of the shield. We're going to keep that because what we're going to do is we're going to cut that again and then we'll make that as part of the reinforcement of the back of the shield. Uh, also I used 
jigsaw to remove that piece. So, <laughs> uh, also used an electric plane to plane down the sides. Alrighty, so I've marked out, I don't know if you can see it there, there you go, marked out the, uh, the uh, D rings for the uh, ha handle holes for the shield boss to go over. Uh, to do that, I measured out the 105 uh, centimeter length, and then measured out the the width for the uh, 80 centimeters, and divided it by halves, and that's given me the dead center point. And from there, I used a uh, tape measure, like one of those um, fabric measuring tapes, and I used that to measure the distance or the uh, the distance between the end parts of the shield boss inside and um, from the center point half the, um, the distance and then marked out in a circle circle completely around from the center point and then um, mark my uh, D's I've already prefabricated a, um, a metal strip as a reinforcement bar for the center of the uh, handhold um, and then measured that across, and that's given me my two D circumferences. And now I'll um, I'll uh, drill it out and cut it out, and we'll go from there. Without one, have the handle snap off during combat, and I had no way to hold the shield. So I now put in these reinforcement bars just in case that happens, and the reinforcement bar will remain in place. So we'll be putting that in soon. Um, first, the next job is to get the linen and lay the linen on the front and then glue that on. Okay, so we got the linen and that's about to go on. Um, you can pick this linen, it's blood red linen available at Spotlight. I think it's properly known as blood red suiting linen. Uh, so you can pick it up for about $25 a meter or $24.99. A meter and uh, if you're measuring it to the size of the shield 100, oh, 105 centimeters converted to meters is 1.05 meters so I'd give it a little extra length and uh, say 1.1 meters or maybe 1.2 meters would probably be the way to, to select it um, uh, it comes wide enough as it is so just get the 1.2 meters should do the trick um, so that, I've cut this to size with a little extra around the edges and we're about to glue this on. Now the tricky part with this is you put the layer of glue on first then layer the linen on top and then you sort of stretch the the linen on into place and so make it a nice flat and even um, and then you layer another um, layer of um, glue across the top so that way you're getting two layers of glue with the linen in between then uh, smooth it all out and let it dry. Once it's dry, then we can uh, put the shield boss on. Okay, just to let you know, uh, I've taken advantage of using the two oil drums, the 44-gallon drums, and I've placed the boss on top of the shield on top of it. Place the shield on top of it, then, so that when I start painting with glue, as it drips down the sides, <coughs> the drop sheet will pick it up. Drop sheets are good. <laughs> um, so yeah, and I'm gonna start painting that up, and then I'll layer the, um, lay the linen across the top and pull it tight. And hopefully you can see some of it. Okay, as you see, I'm painting the glue straight over the shield. Next step after I clean this all out, I've got a nice, clean, nice even coat. I'll, um, I'll lay the layer of it on, you can have the glue uh, on. That's the tricky part, getting it on. And then uh, letting the glue dry and then layering the layer of glue across the top. That's all good fun. Alright, back to Alright, so here we go with the layering of the linen. This is the tricky part. This is why I like to have excess, because then you can use the excess to your advantage. You know, if you get a little bit wrong, it doesn't really matter at first. You just Generally speaking, more glue better. Over the, uh, the tops and bottoms. That's okay. The size of the 
Sorry, it's main route here. Yes, we will fit. Okay. Now that. As you can see, I'm trying to remove as many wrinkles as possible and bubbles. It's a nice smooth surface. Now, the next layer will go blue. This will help glue it in place. Once again, they're wearing liberal amounts. Don't worry about too much if it drips out the sides. It's going to do that no matter what. Now, the whole idea of gluing the linen onto your shield in the first place, it uh, kills two birds with one stone, to be honest. First of all, it gives the color. I've chosen blood red, obviously. So I'm going to have to paint the shield red. It's already red. And so you'll think about this with blue, so it's clear. So that's not a problem. The second thing it does is by gluing the linen on the front, when your shield or if your shield happens to take severe blows, it does splinter or, um, or crack or, you know, uh, succumb to serious blows. Um, the linen will hold the splinter in place, so not only you not get rid of yourself, but your opponents, uh, especially in the enactment, won't succumb to any form of wrist splintering. So this is every bit as much safety precaution for yourself, as well as your uh, fellow reenactors. But also, it, uh, it saves the trouble of having paint for us shield as well. That is for the colour. Typically we also do the same thing on the inside of the shield as well. Uh, I'm not too sure if I'm going to do that for the shield today. Low on time, and I've got his mate for another chase. Now, yours remember. We're heading up camera. He needs his own shield. Unfortunately, he can't make one, so he's asking me for it. For combat shields, I don't usually beautify the inside because combat shields generally will last only about a couple of years, and then you're making a new one anyway. I don't think he's deciding whether he wants to do combat again or not. And to be honest, the Australian Roman scene doesn't seem to do very much of it at all. Hopefully that will change the future. Okay, now some nice white rock across the top. Now I have noticed with these shields, with the wood wheel in front, um, when exposed to wet weather, the white does the glue starts to loosen a little bit. But I have also found that after redrying and then uh, re exposure and then redrying again, after a while it just doesn't come to any further weather issues. So um, just uh, a little bit of patience with it. I suppose if you want, uh, as other people have done before us, you could um, purchase some uh, water resistant spray and spray it on the top. That would probably help with that. But I guess we see I have uh, four shields in my position that I've used this method with, and they all work fine. And I've had them for about two or three years now. Okay, that's it. There she is. Glue painted on. A nice and smooth surface. Anyway, now that job's done, time to let it destroy. Now that the shield has been sufficiently covered on the outside, two things we're going to do. First thing we're going to do is we're going to build the skeletal support structure on the back of the shield, the inside of the shield. So you need approximately Two of these, two strips. Now we're going back to the offcut we cut from the shield in the first place. This one. It's perfect to cut into three pieces and inset into the inside of the shield because it's already conformed to the shape. That's why when I first mentioned in the video when we started cutting it up after removing it from being uh, put on the 
drums, then we're going to set it aside and keep it. So we'll cut. I'll cut this into three strips. One for the bottom of the uh, the uh, skeletal structure, support structure. One for the middle where the handle goes, and one for the top. And then <coughs> these two strips will go on each side. These strips themselves, um, they're probably about uh, three or four centimeters shorter than the actual shield each end. Um, and they're approximately two centimeters, two and a half centimeters wide. As for thickness, well, gauge it, you know. Um, I'm using it just a little bit thicker than this stuff. So, yeah. Um, once we've done that, then we'll lay the, uh, the uh, leftover off-cut linen into the inside of the shield to redden it. That way we don't have to paint that either. Alright, I'll get stuck into it. So now what I've done now, as you can see, I've made the uh, the skeletal structure for the uh, support in the back of the shield. Um, commonly referred to as ribs. So I've made the rib structure for the shield. I've tacked it together. Now all I've got to do is I've got to affix it to the shield itself. But before I can do that, we need to prepare the shield boss. So the next job now is going to be cutting out the uh, D holes here from the, the linen. And then what I've got to do is fit the shield boss to the shield put it in place, mark out these, these holes, the drill holes, drill holes through the shield itself so that the uh, holes line up with the shield box. And then I can fix the rib cage to the inside of the shield using the peening method and what I plan on doing is peening together the shield box to the shield through the handle, onto the rib cage, and then shaping a handle to it as well. So I'll also be making the handle in, in prep, uh, preparation. But that's where we're going back to that off cut again. So this leftover piece of off cut, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna cut pieces of it again to the size of the handle that we've got in the center here and fit it over the top like that and I'll cut it again and make it slightly smaller on this side. So I'll, I'll be making strips about that long which is the distance of the handle and basically the length of the shield boss. Just a little bit over but yeah basically the length of the shield boss so that on the inside we'll have a rounded and smooth um, handle hold on the inside of the boss as well as a handle hold on the outside of the boss uh, of the shield as well the, in the interior of the shield so not only will I cut a couple of strips one on top of the other for this side but from that curved, curved off cut when I put the um, rib cage in and I fit it to the interior of the shield with more pieces cut and laminated over over the top I can shape a handle hole on this side as well and that's the reason why we like to keep that little bit of off cut okay as you can see here I've marked out in chalk uh, where the shield bus is going to go and I've also cut out with a scalpel, the, uh, the excess linen in the uh, handhold. So these are the little uh, strips that I was talking about. This is the excess. So I've got a slightly larger one which uh, fits exactly the same size as the um, handle itself. And I've got one that's slightly thinner, slightly smaller. And that's gonna go on over the top. And then I'll glue those together, laminate them, uh, right over the top of the handhold like that. Once they're dry, I'll smooth them off, um, sand them out, and uh, round them as much as possible, and ensure they fit inside the cavity of the shield boss. So when the shield boss goes on, at the moment if I put it on straight away, 
Doesn't quite fit on smoothly. Do all the excess on this side, so if I put, do it like that, there you go, you see it's lifted up. So, what I've got to do is I've got to make sure that that fits with inside that cavity and allows your hand to get around it as well, inside the, the shell box. So I'm going to smooth that off, sand it out, and uh, make it more rounded. And then once I've done that, then I'll do the, uh, install the, the uh, rib uh, on the inside with the third smaller piece on the inside as well. And then laminate that all again together. And then what I'll do is I'll drill two holes in either side of the, uh, the hand, the handle. Um, and peen them on properly so that uh, during combat or use it should never come apart unless it gets a serious blow and knocks it all out. But before I do all that, before I even install the rib, this strip has got to go on the inside like that. So I'll, uh, I'll show you more as I go. Okay guys here's what I've done. done. I've, um, <laughs> glued those strips on now um, I think I've well I rounded them off a little bit before I put them on so probably a good idea if you guys do that that way you don't have to try and do that later but as soon as that's dried once again I'll start sanding like crazy again and round it all off and make sure it fits inside that shield boss well now what we gotta do is run now wait for it to dry completed the uh, handle on the outside. Now I've got to do the inside. But before I do that, I've now got to, I've got to glue the inside and line it with red. So I've got some strips of, uh, strips of linen. These are just off cuts and I'll line the inside with uh, those. Okay, folks, so I have installed the support rib and I've started, started uh, painting in the, uh, the, the covering, the linen covering. Um, I peened on the handle so that's in place, nice and rounded, both outside the shield and inside the shield, nice and peened on. Um, so now that I've just covered the in interior, all I've got to do is uh, wait till tomorrow morning and I'm going to leather up the, uh, the handle so it's nice and smooth and soft and then uh, finish off the, uh, the last rib and cover that up and then I'll put the shield boss on and then she's ready for paint for uh, edging and painting. Hopefully, I can get this thing done by the end of this weekend. <laughs> Hopefully. We will see. I've got to go on a cruise soon. Anyway, that's what I've done so far, and uh, see you in a few minutes. Okay, so this is the shield. Uh, as you can see, now I've completely covered the interior and the uh, ribs in linen. I've also, as I said, leathered up the handle. That'll prevent any possibility of splintering. Everything's peened on correctly. The only thing left for me to do, really, is uh, give, the, give the shield its edging and its shield boss. I'm going to start with the shield boss thing next. So, but yeah, we're almost done. Once the uh, shield boss and edging's done, then it's just the painting and it's finished. Alrighty folks, we've got the shield boss painted on correctly. As you can see, she's all painted on. Now, if 
you don't know what peening is, I'll add a link to the, uh, this post so that you guys can have a look at uh, a video about how to peen. Uh, basically, it's just rough overview, uh, a method by which to rivet certain objects together. In this case, a steel boss onto a wooden shoe. Uh, anyhow, so now it's peened on and the front is, uh, is ready to go. All we gotta do is now is uh, edge the darn thing with some rawhide. Um, I've used um, dog chews from um, Chibis Chips. You can get the uh, right size ones, we don't need a lot, so I just get those little doggy um, dog chews. So I've got a bunch of them here. So I've already soaked them in water so that it loosens them up. That's about the size you're after. These undo. They're only tied together and then dried. So if you soak them in water, they loosen up nicely. There we go, and uh, once you unfold them, just peel them open. It's a bit like doing a trip, I guess. <laughs> uh, and there you go. You get a nice strip. And what we do is we uh, stick that on the edge. Example. Just fold that over the edge. Now what I do is I uh, I get sinew. So I've got some sinew to show you what that looks like. So there's a roll of sinew. It's basically a natural fiber um, and what I do is I drill a hole into the side of the edge and then as I drill a thread, I thread the, uh, the rawhide strip directly onto the edge. The great thing about this stuff too is once you've sewed it on nice and tight, when it starts to dry, it shrinks and it goes pretty hard, real hard. You use dog chews obviously, so you give them the dog chew on. It takes a dog long enough to chew through. Imagine how long it takes a sword to get through it. So yeah, that's the next thing to do. I'll uh, show you the result when I'm done. Okay, boys and girls, um, I just wanted to show you guys how I'm uh, stitching the door. Like, um, everyone's a little bit different, but as you can see here, everybody may start. So what I've got, I've got my rawhide threaded onto a hooked needle. Okay. And what I started with here, yep. as you see there's the end knot. And what I've done is I've threaded right through this way first, come around on this side here, on this, this hole here, come out, and then threaded in through there again, through where the knot is, All right, through, through there again, back this way, then I made a third hole, that one there, I don't know if you can see that, anyway, that one there, and I threaded back through this way. So what I'm doing basically is, I've got the rawhide on the top, but I'm making my holes along the bottom of the rawhide here, away from the edge itself. The reason I'm doing that is so that uh, when it sort of comes down, it hits the rawhide and doesn't hit you with threading. Because if you put thread over the top, you're going to cut the threading, which means the rawhide starts to fall off. But if you do it this way, as a sword hits the top, especially a blunt sword, it's less likely to cut through your um, rawhide. And even less likely, like, likely again to even cut through your rawhide stitching. Or your sinew stitching, sorry, sinew. So, what I'm doing is, I'll just sort of let you see. I've got my drill, and I've got a small drill bit, just enough to fit the, the uh, needle through. Spacing it about a finger's width apart from each other, approximately. Very carefully punching through the rawhide, as well as the wood. There you go, as you can see, cut through that way. And then, with the needle, now I'm doing sort of like a back stitch, so I'm coming back one spot. Right, so thread through that way. Pull it through. And now I'm going to punch through that new hole. There you go. Through the rawhide, as you can see. Through this side. See, I'm avoiding threading over the top. My rawhide, thread back again, and back through this hole, through this hole again. 
I said it was going to be easy, but here we go. Going through here. Next one. Now you've got to do this pretty quickly, I have to admit, because I find that the rawhide, even though it's nice and wet and soft at the moment, it does dry as you're working, so you've got to be reasonably quick. So you don't want to dawdle too much. So if you get engaged in doing this, what I generally try to do is I commit to one strip at a time. There we go. This is the most time consuming that job of the whole project. It's going to be quite slow. I've known this is taking about two or three days. Maybe because like it's in the way too, you've got things to do. Jobs to attend to. Do. What's this there? There we go. There you have it. And that's basically all you keep doing. You can't round around until you've got the whole, all the edges done. And what I usually do is once I end a strip, I put another strip on top, do a double through it, so you have a second strip. So for example, I would probably get another strip of raw hide like so. And once I thread it all the way along here, throw another piece on top, like so, so that's an overlap. Yeah? Draw through both and start threading again. And just continue threading through all the way around until you get to the other end. Until you get back to the beginning. Come around up. That's basically it, and that's how I thread the uh, raw hide on. Good luck, guys. Okay, just thought I'd quickly show you how the end result. So, that's one strip already sewn on. As you can see, I keep, try to keep my stitching as evenly spaced as possible. From the front. Basically looks like that. There you go. It looks good. So, as long as you can do that, you're just going to do it all the way around. I'll show you what it looks like when I start putting the second one on. Okay, so I've completed the uh, shield um, double strip on the edging. So as promised, I thought I'd show you what it looks like. So there's the join. I'm just going to focus on that. Not quite focusing, is it? But anyhow, as you can see, there's the join. And just keep following it along and you keep going and doing it the same way over and over again until you finish the shield. Um, just a quick word of advice. Uh, with, the, um, with the stitching, um, just make sure that you pull it tight as you go. Um, if you have it loose, then uh, your rawhide stitch, your rawhide's gonna come loose. So if, you're, if you keep pulling your sinew tight, um, you won't need to worry about that later on. But, comes off undone or gets caught in something or what have you but as long as you keep it tight it'll um, it'll be fine um, also it don't worry about if you miss the hole with the rawhide if you poke through one side and you go through the shield and out comes the other side and it comes out through a different spot on the rawhide on, on the other side doesn't matter as long as you um, as long as you get the, that rawhide and you just sew it down all right good luck guys bye